On this episode of Beyond the Nest, I sat down with Mario Leon at Swanson Stadium to talk about his Cuban roots and his experience so far at FGCU. So you grew up in Naples? I grew up in Cuba, actually. I was born and raised, yeah. Came over when I was eight, went straight to Naples, and then uh, lived there my whole life after that. Now, is your family still over there? Um, some of them, for, for the most part, they're here. Okay, for sure. Yeah. Now, with them being so close and you you know, coming to FGC from Naples, what, what kind of a luxury is it for you to be able to go home every now and then have a home-cooked meal? Uh, it's, it's awesome. Um, I mean, I, I know definitely when I'm struggling with a little bit of money or don't want to spend any money, um, just got to drive about 25 minutes south and yeah. um, have a nice Cuban meal. So, nice. I mean, it's, it's awesome. Now, you talked about being born and raised in Cuba. What was it like, you know, playing ball for you in such a strong baseball country? Um, you know, I wish, I wish it was more of like a like a free country in a sense because um, obviously you know our goal is as baseball players is to make it to the big leagues and um, you know and if that someday that comes true for me um, you know I'd love to play for my for my country which I can't right now but um, you know that's that's all everybody knows in my family that's all everybody knows back home so Growing up, you know, we played in the streets. It wasn't organized, but it was something that my grandparents, you know, believed could be something that I would be successful in in the future, same with my parents. So, um, you know, it's when you're Hispanic, Cuban, Puerto Rican, Dominican, you know, it's it kind of runs in the blood. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Baseball is the biggest thing out there. Yeah. For sure, man. Now, you talked about your grandparents and your parents believing it was, you know, the best thing for you. Who was really the driving force in your family that, like, you know, pushed you to be a baseball player? You know, believe it or not, it was my grandmother. Um, funny story, like when, when I was a kid, uh, it's kind of corny in a sense, but uh, we used to go in the backyard and we had a mango tree and the little mangoes that would fall, you know, they'd be green and they, they, they wouldn't be ready yet. Um, we'd go out there and with a broomstick, she'd toss them to me and I'd hit them. Um, and then she'd, she'd flick little caps, bottle caps oh, yeah. at me and with yeah, a broomstick, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I had to hit it. So um, that's kind of where it all started for me, you know, Besides that, my whole family, they've always been my support system. You know, my mom, my dad, and my sisters. Um, so, uh, just everybody, everybody, yeah. basically. That's awesome. That's really cool, yeah. I remember, like, playing ball and stick. I, I, I still play that when I go visit family. Yeah, same, it's, same. It's funny, man. It's funny. For sure. Now, you talked about wanting to play for your country one day. You know, you've seen players that have made it to the MLB, like, by defecting over there, stuff like that, having to do, like, the craziest stories. I mean, Jose Bray, you had to eat a fake passport. Like, what's it like for you, you know, being here and being able to make an easier transition to the MLB? Um, you know, I feel blessed. Uh, that's that's kind of my driving force so every day because my parents sacrificed a lot when they came over here. Um, you know, my, my dad was a doctor in Cuba, and so we didn't live the most comfortable life. Obviously, you really don't over there. Um, but at the same time, they left everything so that, you know, my sisters and me could have that easy lifestyle you know those opportunities for us to be in, in university study um, and play baseball you know and hopefully make it to the pros but yeah it's it's tough it's it's growing up um, I wish I would have been able to for it to be a little bit easier for me and, and luckily I had that opportunity you know those guys that come over here like Jose Abreu Jose Fernandez um, those guys had it rough so it's been a blessing for me to be able to you know be here in this country it's a lot easier that's yeah, for sure for sure now with Chris Sale playing on the Red Sox now, he's been around a lot, you know, coming to basketball games. I've seen you at basketball games with him, um, coming to your guys' games. What's it been like to have him around? Does he give you guys, like, any pointers or anything, or just his presence really, like, make that difference for you guys? Oh, absolutely. I mean, his presence alone does make a difference for us, but um, he's – He's a really down to earth guy. I've had the opportunity uh, to be work to work out with him in the off season um, down in Naples for the past two years now. So we've kind of, you know, that friendship's grown. Yeah. But when he comes here, he talks to all of us, not just me. He, um, you know, when he comes to the basketball games, he, you know, invited us up in the suite to meet uh, meet the other players, uh, shot around with him. Yeah. Um, and it's one of those things that you just go up to him and you ask him like, hey, you know, how's the season going? And then the conversation just goes from there. He asks you how you're doing, um, the different pitches that you throw, the different situations that you get yourself into. And then that's where the advice just kind of comes. So you just sit there and you really just listen to him talk. Mm -hmm. And then you just t you just let it soak in. You know, mm -hmm. he's he's full of knowledge. He's always um, down to give you advice, always. That's awesome. That's awesome. Now, you've been the president of Eagles Council for two years now. 
what's that whole experience been like for you and what kind of opportunities have presented itself? Um, outside of baseball, that's probably been the, the best experience college mm -hmm. of my college career, mm -hmm. honestly. Um, you know, it's one of those things that has allowed me to view college athletics in a completely different realm. You know, a lot of the a lot of the things that happen behind the scene, um, people make speculations about um, without having prior knowledge to it. And that was me. I fell into that um, earlier on. But through Eagles Council, I've been able to attend um, a bunch of national SAC meetings, um, student athlete advisory committee, um, leadership forums. Uh, and all of those things have allowed me to view, you know, the things that the NCAA actually does for us as athletes. Um, all of the opportunities that are ready for us to take, you know, but we just have to educate ourselves. Um, I had a chance to write an article mm -hmm. for the ASUN, um, and I talked a little bit about that, but it's one of those things that if, you know, those, those young guys and, and girls mm -hmm. um, can get involved with early on, you know, it's, it's life-changing, honestly. Awesome. Man. Awesome, man. Appreciate it, bro. Anytime.